but obviously it was built. We're walking through it. Would you be happy? Or you said, well, how's the uh, plumbing? Is it like lead pipes or PVC or copper? I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, was the soil treated for termites? Maybe. I'm about to spend the next 30 years paying for a house. I want that information. And yet I find that sometimes because we feel that we've fallen in love, we don't exercise wisdom to really ask ourselves and the other person the tough questions. Just to say, hey, in, in my counseling years, and I'm not doing active therapy anymore, um, but in my counseling years, I'd say of all the hundreds of couples that I did premarital counseling with, I'd say there were probably 10 or less that through the counseling process broke off the engagement. Because they came to the conclusion that they were perhaps about to make one of the biggest mistakes they could possibly make in life. And was that painful? Is there still a sense of grief and loss? You bet. But it's nothing like the pain of a divorce and ripping that apart, especially when kids are there. And so I actually felt that God preserved and helped them in some ways. So let me give you 10 key areas. Um, and again, um, I have this in a, in a uh, document that uh, will be uploaded on Facebook. But let me, let me give you some areas that... You know, if you're in a serious relationship or you hope to be someday, especially if you believe that this relationship may lead to marriage, these are some things that you and uh, this other person should consider. Your spiritual relationship. You know, have you ever sat down and discussed what you believe is sort of the balanced biblical model for marriage and the different roles that husbands and wives should play in that marriage? Believe me, I have seen opinions all across the map. And sometimes we assume that someone knows or believes or accepts certain things. And I'm like, why? Well, that's, that's a big assumption. Don't do it. Talk about it. What does spiritual intimacy mean to you? Um, what, 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 how will we be involved in fellowship, in ministry together? Will we? Do we tithe? Do we not tithe? What do we give to? Do we do ministry together? Gosh, you were working with youth group and I was doing the choir or the worship team. Are you going to keep doing that and I'm going to keep doing this? Or are we going to find some... Talk about those things. They're important. They're valid. Uh, one of the things I, talk, I, I find is one of the biggest disappointments in Christian couples, especially the wives, is the lack of spiritual intimacy in the marriage. Because they had an assumption that their husband would sort of take some spiritual leadership. Perhaps some of it occurred on this side during some dating, but on the other side, it didn't. And so, talk about those things. It doesn't mean that we don't still grow, we're still not working through things, but what I'm saying is part of pre-engagement dialogue or counseling should include some conversation about that. Your emotional relationship. Are you best friends? Do you really honestly enjoy just palling around? I can say that about my wife. Donna absolutely is my best friend. She's fun. I'm crazy. But we enjoy each other's company. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't have any guy friends and she doesn't have any girlfriends. We do. But I honestly enjoy being with her. I will see a man carry his sweetheart's purse anywhere. He can't wait to get home from work and talk for four hours on the phone. They get married and something just sucks that right out of their brain. <laughs> it's like, oh, really, baby? We gotta go out? Mm. Don't stop being best friends. Because friendship provides an awesome relationship for the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, and the conflicts and stress that any marriage will face. If you live long enough, you're going to experience Turmoil, conflict, unexpected things, stress from places you might not have even anticipated. Marry your best friend. Do you share the same values emotionally? Can you accept and appreciate that you're different? Right? Here, here's what I've learned. How many of you have heard that opposites attract? Do you, do you believe that? Sometimes? 
I don't actually think that that's entirely true. Let me say why. I think that differences attract. I think we fall in love with people who are different than us, not necessarily opposite, but when I'm around this person, the qualities and characteristics and the talents and the giftedness of that person, I realize they're not my strong suits. And so when I'm around you, I feel more complete as a person, and that feels good. That's why I like being around you. But what happens is we get married, okay? And the two shall become one, and the fun begins when we start talking about, well, which one? <laughs> you or me. And I'm like, don't ever stop celebrating the differences because it's probably what you fell in love with. But talk about it. Thirdly, your communication style. How do you make decisions? Is it win-lose? Win-win? Are you aware of each other's primary love language? Do you know how the other person tends to receive and speak love? Have you talked about it? Have you become bilingual? I think every person needs to speak at least two languages. You need to be able to communicate more than one language. Do you resolve conflict well? I used to have some engaged couples and they would sit on my love seat my office, shoulder to shoulder, sometimes head to head, and they would smile, you know, and I'd say, have you fought yet? No. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But you know what? You have to learn how to handle conflict. Do you do it well? Is it fair? Do you fight fair? Do you practice forgiveness when your feelings are hurt? How do you communicate? Fourth, your social leisure life. Have you talked about that? Do you have fun together? Do you have some common interests? Is there freedom to have some of your own space and time in the relationship? Do you give each other that? If so, how and when? I, I uh, counseled a couple once that was having quite a bit of conflict early in their marriage. They met because they played co-ed softball. He was way into it. He actually played in th on three different teams. He played on uh, a church team, uh, a rec co-ed team, and a guys team. That's how they met. They fell in love because they had this common interest. They got married. Softball season came up. She's like, okay, that was fun then. And, you know, why don't we, you and I, do the church team together, the co -ed church team. But he wanted to do all three teams, which means he's out between practice and game four and sometimes five days, nights a week. How do you think that went over? And he was shocked because he thought, oh, I thought we both loved softball. And then after we got married, we just keep doing this all the time. They never talked about it. They never talked about their social leisure life or what that might look like post-marriage. Uh, here's another one, job career goals and issues. Like I said, with more women entering into career paths and, and uh, hopefully the, the glass ceiling is lower and will continue to lower, but the reality is whose career path should take precedence? What if both people are in a great opportunities for advancement or promotion or whatever. Well, who, who gets preference here? Have you talked about that, if that should happen? What happens with disruptions, moves, extra hours when kids come along? You know, how are you going to manage both work and your family life schedules? Have you talked about it? See, these are all great things to talk about. Another area, your financial needs, values, and goals. Do you know the number one reason for domestic violence in this country? Money. Money related issues is the number one reason for domestic violence incidents. I'm not saying that there's not other factors behind that anger, that violence, but what often becomes the tipping point and precipitates the actual violent event are financial stressors and pressures and decisions. So if you talked about financial needs, budget, what happens if one comes to the relationship with a lot of debt and the other one doesn't? Well, I have this big school loan. So 
some of you might have some school loans. What if someone has a mortgage and someone doesn't? What if you both have school loans or other debts? How is debt going to be handled? What if you're both working? Do we have one checking account? Your account, my account, and the third account? How do we do that? Who pays the bills? Is it our money, your money, we money? How do we do that? If we don't talk about that and try to figure it out as you go along, you may find yourself surprised by some things. Um, extended family dynamics is another area. The in-laws, the outlaws, and all the laws. Because there is some truth that when we marry someone, we do marry, yeah, you do. You marry their family. Um, and, and that's an important part of what, you know, what are the family traditions? Well, that's the way we used to do it, right? See, that's why I think Adam and Eve had the perfect marriage. <laughs> he never had to hear about all the other guys that she could have dated. And she never had to hear about how great his mother's cooking was. Okay? How about child rearing issues? Do we have children? If so, when do we start? How many children do we have? What are our beliefs about discipline and child rearing? I've counseled a number of couples who, I, I remember a couple sitting in front of me, they were both career couples. I mean, they were on a career track, but her biological clock was ticking. She was 35. She was uh, in a bank executive at that point. She said, you know what? I just have a few years if we're gonna start a family, it's now. He was enjoying the lifestyle that they had built together the travel and all the other things because they were a two income family with no kids. And I'm looking at them, they've now been married for like uh, 11 years. And I looked at and I said, well, did you talk about having kids? Well, no, not really. I said, come on. You never really talked about if you should have kids? He said, no. He looked at Remy and says, I just thought that she'd enjoy this lifestyle. Never talked about it. Now I know that might seem strange, but it does happen. Um, household responsibilities. Who does what around here? I find sometimes, here's what you find, here's what the research shows. In two income relationships, guess who still does most of the work around the home? <laughs> That's right. Who still does a lot of the child-related stuff? The women do, the wives do. Guys, take an extra special notes. <laughs> and lastly, physical intimacy. Yes, it's okay to talk about sex before marriage. No, it's not okay to do sex before marriage. <laughs> Don't marry someone that's not attractive to you. <laughs> You hear what I said? Yeah. Don't ever go, well, they're really nice. <laughs> I have a great personality. Those things are important. They really love Jesus. Okay, fine. That's good. But you know what? You need to marry someone that makes your heart do this. My wife and I have been married 30 years. She caught me checking her out the other day. I said, what are you doing? Said, We're married. <laughs> She's gorgeous to me. He needs to be your prince. She needs to be your queen. All the it doesn't mean that we don't ebb and flow. But you know what? Are you attracted to each other physically? And have you talked about physical intimacy? Here, here's another statistic out there that I know. And maybe you've heard this as counseling. 